Professor Gray for um, giving us this opportunity to actually talk to you today. So as a pediatrician, what inspired you to move into the HIV AIDS research space in the 90s? So I, was, I became a pediatrician and as I started doing pediatrics, HIV exploded at the wards at Barragwanas Hospital. And very soon, um, more than um, one in three children who came to our ward, wards were HIV infected. And it was a devastating time because these were young babies, three months old, and their mothers would bring their, these little cherubs into the ward and we would take one look at them and we would know what the diagnosis was that these children had pneumocystis pneumonia. And I felt that I needed to do something. So as a, as a background, I was always interested in HIV and I was an HIV activist. I worked in a, um, a health activist program and I always did the portfolio of HIV. And so I was um, first an AIDS activist and in my early part of my career I worked at the Baragwanath ICU and the person in charge of my unit was a cardiothoracic surgeon and he himself was HIV infected and he died um, in 1988 and his death um, affected me greatly because he also was a very talented person. And so with my HIV activism and with knowing someone who was HIV infected and seeing the, the um, HIV epidemic explode in front of me, I wanted to do something. And so after I became a pediatrician, I was working in the neonatology wards at Barragwanath Hospital and I partnered with someone called James McIntyre who was an obstetrician and he was, he was looking after HIV infected pregnant women and so we, we partnered and, and started a perinatal HIV clinic and um, he, he, would, he would follow up the women and I'd follow up their babies and um, we then designed some research to try and find ways to minimize breast milk transmission of HIV and at that stage in 96 we then established the HIV, the perinatal HIV research unit and so um, I was inspired on many levels to, to work in pediatric uh, HIV because I wanted to, um, it, it is devastating to see children uh, die of HIV and so um, our program was started to try and minimize transmission and also to provide a support group um, and follow up and care for children who were born to HIV infected women. Oh, thank you, Prof. Um, why do you think that activism was so important uh, in the context of this country? Um, that we actually had, that you actually had to be an activist uh, in terms of um, pushing that agenda to be able to uh, deal with the scourge uh, of the epidemic. Very closely and very early on, I, I, I learned that um, the best way to be an activist is to have evidence. And I believe that I saw the power of science. And if there was ever um, a way that you could see how science works was in HIV, because we used evidence in HIV to change policy, to, to um, push politicians to make right decisions, and to take um, governments to court. Um, and, um, and that was all based on data. So we could not go to the constitutional court without having evidence um, that there were ways to prevent mother to child transmission and that these were affordable. And so if you ever want to link um, health activism, um, you must use your science evidence and that's an incredible powerful tool. And so what's always been exciting for me is using science evidence to change policy or to use science evidence to pressurize um, decision makers into, into um, doing the right thing. So what actually I assume as well that in, um, in terms of evidence-based research, that's quite important in the HIV vaccine development space. Can you just tell us uh, what is happening in that space? You, you're quite involved in that, uh, working with uh, the HIV Vaccine Trials Network. People are always curious why I'm involved in HIV vaccine research. But I decided very early on to become involved in HIV vaccine research because I wanted a vaccine that could prevent breast milk transmission of HIV. I wanted a vaccine that children could use to protect themselves from getting HIV from their mothers and hopefully the vaccine that they used for that could help them uh, not get HIV when they were bigger. And the only way a pediatrician can influence that agenda is to be involved in that agenda. And so I, 
I moved away from mother to child transmission of HIV and I focused on working with HIV vaccine research. And so I found myself working in, in HIV vaccines in, in adults as, as an investigator um, to, to try and find ways of preventing um, HIV acquisition. So as we speak, it's 2018 and um, we are collaborating uh, with the HVTN, with the NIH, with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and other pharmaceutical companies to, um, f uh, to, to look at um, how to prevent HIV acquisition. And we are now working on three different programs. Um, and hopefully these three different programs with, all, with different approaches um, will give us some answers in 2020. So in terms of your journey moving from um, the P uh, PHRU and, um, and of course uh, you've mentioned the collaborations are quite important with the different partners that you're working with in the HIV vaccine space. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about um, the move to the SAMRC? Uh, I'm sure it was kind of like a move, uh, it was kind of natural progression, uh, moving to the SAMRC, being the president and CEO of, of South Africa's uh, National Council. Being the president and CEO of the South African Medical Research Council has been one of the greatest jobs of my life. Um, this, this job um, has taught me many things and has um, inspired me to, to look beyond HIV. HIV and TB are very important um, and we need to make sure that we eradicate both of these epidemics and that we work very hard to find um, solutions for HIV and TB. And so um, being at the MRC as, as its president has allowed me to, to ensure that we also um, uh, direct some of our research to the quadruple burden of disease and these four interlocking epidemics. And so um, uh, as, a, as the president of the MRC, I've been enriched uh, in, in, to be able to, to expand beyond HIV um, and, um, and HIV vaccines. Being the president of the MRC um, is a, a service to my country. Um, and a service to um, the people who, who need solutions to their health problems. And so um, you know, I, I, I do this job because I believe that uh, we all need uh, to contribute to our country and build um, capacity. And so this is my commitment to South Africa. Um, Prof, why, why do you think it's important to um, focus on genomics? Um, what does it mean just in terms of the focus areas of the SAMRC? So I think it's important for lots of reasons. Okay. One, of the, one of the most important reasons is that our fourth um, epidemic is an epidemic of non-communicable diseases. And we know that a lot of the drugs that are used um, to control non-communicable diseases um, have not been evaluated adequately. In, um, in African populations and also and people who are of African origin sometimes don't respond um, in the same way to these drugs as people from other um, population groups. And so we need, to, we need to understand the reasons for this. And, and to understand the reasons for this is to understand um, the genetic variability and the genetic differences. We also know that cancer treatment also um, can vary according to um, your ethnicity. And so by having a, um, expertise in, in, in understanding the interplay between um, uh, the host genome, um, cancer and its response can help us uh, design better drugs. So we need to do all of this because we need to understand health in a much better way than we do and we need to be able to respond to the health needs of new epidemics as they come along um, um, and are less infectious in nature. Prof, you've had quite an illustrious career, um, but if you had to just um, pinpoint some of the highlights uh, while, you were at, while you were at the SAMRC, what would you say those, those highlights actually are? Well, I think at the Medical Research Council, as the leader of the Medical Research Council, um, the highlights have been uh, seen talent being developed. And so for me, um, being at the helm of the MRC, um, my highlight has been seeing uh, people develop. Um, uh, science science 
our careers blossoming, um, people doing wonderful things and discovering great things. So as the head of the MRC, um, um, everybody's success is my success. And so in this job, um, uh, you create opportunity and chances for people and um, them succeeding makes me incredibly happy. Thank you, Prof. We've reached the festive season, so what would be your message to um, the SMRC staff? So I think that when we get to the end of the year, everybody has worked incredibly hard. And um, the first thing one should do is to take some time out and enjoy family and friends and um, spend time with them uh, uh, to show them your, their grati your gratitude for them allowing you to work so hard. So the first thing I would say is enjoy your family and um, treat them well and uh, spend some time with them. The second thing I'd say is take this time to think about um, what you want to do next year. It's time to reflect. It's time to think. We hardly ever get time to think. So use this time to think about, you know, what, am I, what are we going to do next year? What are we going to achieve? And, and how are we going to do it? And then I want to say to you, come back next year and um, let's make magic again.